Go, Thomas, go. If this video was a prize fight, you hit the lamestream media narrative like a speed bag in practice. My spirit compass was in agreement with every utterance. I bolted on the prayer doesn't do shit point, but I see Christianity as so connected to paganism, I disregard that beef. For example, I experienced a sync or synchronicity with the Vat City channel and its creator yesterday around this theme that continues here about recognizing chaos as the foundation of this transformative New World Order decloaking apocalypse we're stewing in. He was focusing on a Bible story where a guy wanted to show the power of the Lord to make the improbable possible. That guy was Jacob. He made a deal with maybe his former master that he would take a share of, uh, I think it ended up not being cattle, but sheep, goats, something, uh, that had rare spots, so the master tried to screw him over by giving him the kind with colors least likely to produce that coat, as in uh, studying biology and genetic determinism. He didn't just pray. He cut sticks to look spotted and put them in the water trough of the cattle so it would influence them through sight to unconsciously sink to his desire, and it did, and produced far more than average of the spotted variety. If that's not pagan magic, I don't know what is. If you want to know more about that concept, I was hearing about it from Vat City, and I'll put that episode link in the description. Referencing a Lord of Lords is just part of that to me, comparing paganism to monotheism and Christianity. Oh, I see there's an error here. I have to go all the way to the beginning to keep going through the slides. But that's cool that I can just tap the screen when I want to change the slides. Okay. In regards to kings and republics and government, Thomas Sheridan uh, made a reference to thinking it it was a silly idea that people are saying there's this legitimate king of England in exile, meaning why would you want to replace one scam government with another? And the overall topic that's been synchronizing in this alt media that I see recently has been something that's a simple idea we all know, but it's very hard to practice, which is how do you not take the bait of 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 media you know how do you, how do you live in the world but not of the world as a christian would say thomas sheridan did really well about kind of breezing through some points that are discussed in social media the alternative media that sadly, I'm always complaining because those things people are talking about are these mainstream media scam political hype ideas. But he does like what I do where I'm trying to merge my everyday life, my individual perspective with this biggest perspective. Interpersonalism. I'm very anarchistic. My main point on that is that not everyone would become a monster if they could do whatever they wanted. Just because Jimmy Savile buggers kids doesn't mean I'd do that in a Mad Max fantasy. Fake ops like the Chaz are to make people think only evil comes out of autonomous zones, out of freedom. Even les lefties I know have said that defund the police is the worst marketing brand ever. Hell, 
tons of Trump supporters would support police reform, as would many cops, because the pay is shit. I've been homeless, and the police were nice and supportive here in Little Rock, Arkansas, so as much as I don't like the sight of police, they have always treated me with respect. Of course, you know, a commie would say that's because of my white privilege. One time, a trooper intimidated me to agree that I was at fault in an accident, but that is fair because it's my job to know my rights. I was uh, a young adult. I wanted to go back to my apartment uh, after a Thanksgiving holiday and having difficulty in getting along with my folks, so I left at night. It was foggy. I came to a T intersection of Sunshine Road and s uh, two what is it? Seventy West, two seventy West, and um, there they have a sign there with flashing lights because it's common that people overshoot that stop sign in that T intersection and end up in this deep ditch on the other side, and it wasn't going on, and the officer measured the skid marks I could tell that I wasn't speeding but he he got in the the car and was demanding or he had me get in the passenger seat of his vehicle while he was filling out his paperwork and when I wouldn't agree that it was my fault you know he's like he said don't you eyeball fuck me you know for looking him in the eye <laughs> with the super straight brim hat that the troopers wear and all that. But uh, anyway, I'm just giving you a sense of like, I'm super anti-authoritarian, but I don't support any of the kind of behavior uh, that you see the far left, the commie left do of, you know, killing people that say all, all lives matter or not caring about all the black folks that have been killed with these BLM riots, etc. That documentary on Netflix, Wild Wild Country, shows that any neighborhood can organize their own police force that is trained by the state. Those were cream of the crop hippies in a yoga sex cult and they had their own cops and paramilitary with assault rifles and the US system of government including we the people handled that social experiment well even if it was shut down and crumbled from within. I believe in angels and demons and a cosmic government that guides our spiritual evolution. And we all know that story is the battle between control and freedom we fight today. So I believe in Plato's Republic. I believe gods look down on our drama, just like the movie Clash of the Titans, that was uh, really even more inspiring to me as Star Wars was, because it introduced me to Ray Harryhausen, and his stop frame animation, which is superior to all this computer garbage, as well as uh, Greek mythology, and how that's just as important to me as uh, the Holy Bible. I believe gods look down on our drama like they did in that movie with the same entertainment value that Trump provides us. And, and I noticed that I was amazed how similar a lot of Thomas's perspective is to my own in that like I typically don't support Trump because he's a Mason and that links to Luciferianism and human sacrifice, child pedophilia, uh, Zionism with Israel running America and the world, that kind of a thing. But at, I can't help but being entertained by him, number one, as well as wanting to use uh, the mojo, you know, I agree with a lot of the ideas that he and his supporters value, uh, and am hopeful that he, he could be 
a legitimate threat to the established order. I believe that peasant sharecroppers in Europe at least had an inheritance to tend the land. Do people, you know, how often do people have an inheritance today? And that, that concept of inheritance is tied to uh, a monarchy. And then the whole question of not just money, but what does it matter to be, have a family? What does it matter to come from a European culture as Americans? Or, or Africa as African Americans, or uh, uh, you know, our DNA and our family name and those kind of things. They, they, these sharecroppers at least had an inheritance to tend the land that they could hand down, and that if one debates the merits of that system versus capitalism and employment, it's a lot livelier of a debate than than we were told uh, you know this this lie that everything progresses in a straight line to more and more freedom or better better you know whatever Trump stirs Americans to want a virtuous king I think it is logical to learn from this American experiment and say maybe sometimes the old ways are best just as Europe is ebbing away from the EU Babylon. I notice that I think I agree with this communitarian ideal of managing the different cultures like how they are injecting the West with communism after China had to include open markets. Even if I champion hyper-individualism, that is my contribution to the greater good. I am bullying the sheep class with. My Briggs-Meyer personality type is the debater, so I know both sides of anything has merit, which is inherent in the word side, which means it's interdependent upon the other side. Even if we hate each other, most especially if we hate each other, that tension between the opposites is our cooperation. This produces behavior in me like daily Bible reading, as well as thoughts like, if God doesn't like my best, then fuck him. This life is nuts. This author, Pierre Sabak, was on Aeon Bite, and he was talking about angel sailors and how the Navy is an angelic concept. Again, I don't like the Zionist, Luciferian, evil crap like satanic pedophilia, but I'd be a liar to not admit that my independent spirit and that of the Jesus archetype is just the other side of that enlightenment. I donated 25 bu bucks to the Trump campaign even though I usually don't even support voting. Controlled opposition is a two-way street. I suggest we stop trying to converse with the commies and start some brinksmanship with our fellows in the alt-right. For example, let's channel MAGA mojo toward copying how that guy led a cleanup effort in Baltimore and LA. Why do commie, commies dominate in offering solutions to environmental concerns? Whether we are pagan or Christian, we're supposed to mirror the gods as stewards of nature here on earth. Isn't that a key idea of conservatism? If the commies have BLM, where is our counterattack where we cooperate to provide solutions instead of just burn Rome? Anyone who blames others for evil in the world is a fucking loser. We're warriors, and that kind of behavior isn't allowed in our ranks. When Thomas makes fun of soy society, it's funnier than most stand-up comedy to me. Why do commies dominate in comedy? Please support our confederacy of the unwanted by checking out Sam Tripoli's broken simulation site 
which he is promoting as an alternative to GoobTube, who dismantled the algorithm that used to help us find quality content. He and his peers are doing what I've been demanding forever. They are having Zoom conferences with big names in Altlandia, such as James Corbett and Jason Burmis, who are collaborating to run plays as a decentralized intelligence agency. The CIA and the oligarch are just the dungeon masters. We're the heroes. The word Jew means hero and has nothing to do with Zionism. We're the paupers the princes envy. Don't forget it. Thanks for listening, and I welcome any comments or questions, and would appreciate if you would share with me who are your favorite thought leaders I should check out, and how can we operate as a confederacy of alternative folk, both locally and worldwide and beyond. Thank you. This has been Chad Warren. Good day.